Hello, very good evening to you and a warm welcome to News 360 Live from our news hub here at Adesawe in Kanda. Accra. My name is Park Kutiasari. I'm Nasty Fort. A look at the top stories for tonight. News 360 Headlines is brought to you by Deluxe Paint, GT Bank, and Piccadilly Biscuits, My Life Insurance. More than 20 persons arrested after a protest to draw government attention to the abandoned new Doma Kotokum dual carriage road project in Sunyani turned chaotic. National Communication Authority, NCA, shuts down Sunyane-based radio station, Space FM. Also in the bulletin, slum dwellers, Lord Government City re Redevelopment Plan. Also ahead this evening, Ghana Statistical Service to spend $83 million to conduct paperless national census next year. And elsewhere on the international front, Sudan's military leaders announced agreement with Opposition Alliance for a three-year transition period to a civilian administration. Stay with us here on News 360. We've got the details of these stories and much more news. As always, our bulletin is live all across the world on 3news.com and TV3 Gone on Facebook as well as 279 on DSTV. Let's get started with our very first story this evening as more than 20 persons have been arrested after a protest to draw government's attention to the abandoned new Doma Kotokrom dual carriage road project in Sunyane turned chaotic. Our Bono regional correspondent Larry Parker Simosis reports a police officer was nearly lynched by the irate demonstrators. The agitation, according to the protesters, was as a result of the spate of moto accidents on the abandoned dual carriage project, claiming that 32 lives had been lost on that stretch. They blocked the road and burnt car tires overnight. It got more intense when one of the protesters was arrested. The irate crowd then began pelting the police with stones from all directions, accosting one of them and damaging two police vehicles. The arrival of a police reinforcement team led to the arrest of some of the demonstrators. Now, I had to remove the, the, the lorry ties and the wood that is blockade the police car. So as at the time the car took off, I was the only one left on the ground. There were people that had surrounded me with stones, catalysis and all other weapons. But thank God the peace I was keeping saved me. One of the demonstrators, Hassan Mubarak, said the dual carriage road has been abandoned, resulting in numerous accidents. For close to 12 years, the project has stalled. Many lives have been lost on this stretch, including four police officers. DSP Franklin Kramo said those arrested would be processed for court. Elsewhere, a middle-aged resident of Fijai in Takrade, Akwesiata, was reportedly tied to a Toyota Tundra vehicle and dragged on the street of Adiembra Wednesday, May 15. Viewers are warned the pictures of the following story could be disturbing. He was accused by a man called Panya Wan and his two friends of stealing pieces of treated wood in the neighborhood. Now, Kweta alleged he was brutally assaulted before finally tied to the vehicle. Akwesiata sustained extensive abrasion and injuries and currently receiving treatment at the Ifiankwanta Regional Hospital. Meanwhile, the case has been reported to the police. A rather worrying one there. We'll be certainly be following up on it and bring you a lot more in it subsequently within the bulletin. So stay with us. But some residents of Nima and Mamobi in Accra want government to embark on an aggressive behavioral change campaign on waste management in the two communities. This follows the Works and Housing Ministry's announcement of a major facelift to slums, which forms part of the president's vision of inner city and Zongo development. Here's a report by my colleague, Selom Amenya. The Works and Housing Minister, Samuel Atachia, reiterated what the President had already said in his State of the Nation address, that they are seeking to transform 
uh, Nima and Mahmoudi and other slums under the slum uh, redevelopment program. And this has created or generated a lot of uh, discussion across uh, the media as well as the country. We are here to speak to the presiding member of the Iowa North uh, Municipal Assembly. How do you see this uh, vision by the president? Yes, yeah, very loud. About. It's something that we've been waiting for so long. Because when you look at the community, the way it has been designed, it has been very difficult for the municipal to implement certain projects. As you can see, uh, we are having this one being one household. You see? We don't even have layout. We don't have social centers. You see? We don't have toilet facilities. Yeah, yeah, what area, Hano? I was saying, yes, sir, yes, my uncle, sir. Sir, a fee, a fee, yeah, yeah, yeah. All of us residents must change our attitude towards sanitation. If not, it will be a Herculean tax for government. Some will build a house and there is a big air condition, like the house is coming down. And there is no space. Something may happen right now. We all, we are going to be destroyed because there's no space for somebody like ambulance or uh, fire service cannot come around. So we are happy for what the president is about to do. I just want to do I just to do I just want to Try walking to the polyclinic. The buildings are clustered without access roads, and this generates a lot of heat in the area. The least said about sanitation culture, the better. A landlord, Yusuf Mohammed, is worried the project will take away his source of income as residents, including himself, will be given apartments for free. If you know your family house, but tenants won't. Most of our houses are owned by families, with some rented out to tenants. This is where we also generate our income. But if the project will take away our incomes, then government must reconsider. Meanwhile, the NDC MP Fayasu North, Yusuf Isakajaja, has raised concerns over what he describes as government failure to provide him and all other relevant stakeholders with the necessary information about the project. But presiding member of the Ayawasu North Municipal Assembly, Derek Asagbo, insists the NP has no case as the proposal is yet to be put before cabinet. And I can't remember the last time he even came to our general assembly. Yeah, since the assembly has come to be, uh, I think he only came one time and he sat about 15 minutes and he left. So I don't think he's much aware of what is even happening within the assembly. Meanwhile, slum dwellers at Dagoma Line in Kumasi have welcomed government's intervention. Uh, they, however, want to know the relocation plans to pave way for the project. Here's a report my colleague, Ibrahim Abubakar. The project is expected to be rolled out to other slum communities after Nima and Mamobi in Accra. Slum dwellers at Dagomba Line in Kumasi welcome. This our place is not very good for us. We are here and the mosquitoes, everything, cockroaches are all up. And uh, if the government planning to come and do this thing for us, why the government plan to move us? Me, I support it. I support the Zongo redevelopment project, but I have concerns about the location and whether we pay rent or not. Under the project, high-rise buildings with amenities would replace the existing slum structures. Well, let's turn to the healthcare sector now. As patients who required services at the Central Medical Laboratory at the Kolibu Teaching Hospital and their relatives were turned away following a sit-down strike by the allied health professionals. Essie Benoit Nyame reports some members, however, were on standby to attend to emergency cases. The situation at the Central Laboratory when the news team got there Wednesday morning. Many people were not aware of the strike and had to be briefed on the situation. The filmatology unit of the central lab was empty. Staff were in red bands and had left their working areas. 
Some frustrated relatives did not know what to do about the situation. My daughter-in-law uh, 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 is in uh, critical condition in the maternity uh, ward. She couldn't deliver. She was, she was operated. And now I'm here for her lab. This is the blood. I'm holding blood here. And they said they, they, uh, they are on strike. And so should I send the blood home? How long have you been here? About uh, uh, three or four hours now. I'm frustrated. I don't know what to do. I was asked to come and take some uh, bottles for some blood samples, for some blood analysis for my mom. But I came and uh, went to the cashier to pay, and she said the people are on strike, so they cannot take the money. If they take the money, uh, there will be tension there, so they are waiting for them to resume before they can take any money. Chairman of the Kolibu Teaching Hospital Chapter of the Federation, Thomas Tankwa, said some exceptional cases were being attended to. Today we have started in full force and um, because our, the way we work here uh, is not uh, as with the other uh, this thing. So those that we are in contract with that have already paid, we, are, we receive their sample because they, have, they came here and they can, can attend them. So we have received, we've received those samples. But as fresh cases, we are not working on them. And that is the status we have now. The strike, he said, would continue until their demands were made. From what we know from the ministry's organogram, with, which has the Allied Health uh, section on it, we expected that when they are reconstituting the uh, uh, um, hospital, uh, teaching hospital board, the Allied Health grouping, which consists of 18 different professions, should have been included on it, but we were sidelined. The Allied Health Professional Council, Council Board which has not been in existence for the past two and a half years. And we think that's not very good uh, for the country because new schools are being, uh, uh, allied health schools are being uh, opened and we don't know who is regulating what they are doing. And the radiology department staff were attending to emergency cases even though they had served notice of the strike. Members are the National Radiotherapy, Oncology and Nuclear Centre, we were told, were also working. Members said, among other things, nothing had been done on the non-inclusion of allied health professionals in the proposed amendments to the governing board of the Ghana Health Service and Teaching Hospital Act 1916 at 525. The National Communication Authority, NCA, has shut down Sonyani Bay's pro-government radio station, Space FM, in compliance with the ruling of the Electronic Communication Tribunal. It follows similar shutdowns of Accra Bay's radio station, Radio Gold and Radio XYZ. Now, the NCA has explained that the shutdown is as a result of the FM Spectrum audit in 2017, whereby some stations were found to be in default and were fined by the authority. However, some of the stations in default, not satisfied with the action, proceeded uh, to the various courts, the Electronic Communications Tribunal and the High Court, to appeal against the NCA's decision. This resulted in a decision by the ECT in 2018, which reviewed the status of expired FM radio broadcasting authorization and which ruled, among others, that the companies whose authorization had expired freshly apply for them. While some stations shut down following this decision, others did not. In all, about 31 radio stations nationwide will be shut down in the next four weeks for operating without authorization. Well, meanwhile, managing editor of the Insight newspaper, Kwesi Pratt Jr., says the National Communications Authority is relying on an archaic law to violate the Constitution with impunity. Speaking at a forum by Free Media Vanguard in Accra to express their disgust over the closure of some radio stations, he said the media and other interest groups will be galvanized to fight injustice against media practice in the country. The closure of the radio stations is not a matter for the radio stations and is not a matter for any political party. Indeed, it's a matter which should concern all the 28 or 29 million Ghanaian people. Now, I say this because the right of free expression, it helps us as journalists and broadcasters and so on in our work, but it does not belong to us. 
the right of free expression belongs to every child. It belongs to every adult. It belongs to every woman. It belongs to every man. It's a right of citizenship. So if you take away the right of free expression, you weaken citizenship. And that is why we need to mobilize across all the lines. That is why we need to mobilize across religious lines, across political lines, across social lines and so on. We need to be heard in one loud voice of condemnation against creeping tyranny, wherever that tyranny is coming from. And I'm impressed. But I'm even more impressed that this time round, the Ghana Journalist Association has been heard loud and clear. Med, uh, I beg your pardon, so watching News 360 live from my news hub here at Adesawa in Kanda. Remember that we're streaming live on Facebook. You can join us with the views, comments and suggestions on any of our top stories this hour. If you feel strongly about any of our uh, topics tonight, uh, feel free to visit our social media feed. It's TV3GH on Facebook and on Twitter. Now, exactly 40 years ago today, former President Flight Lieutenant Jerry John Rawlins staged his first military coup. It was just five weeks before he scheduled general elections to return the country to civilian rule. Here's a throwback on aspects of Ghana's military rule history. <laughs> Ghana's third military coup was planned by a small group of disgruntled military officers. On May 15, 1979, less than five weeks before the national elections, Flight Lieutenant Jerry John Rawlins and several members of the Air Force tried to overthrow the General Ekufu-led Supreme Military Council. But there was a historical sequence in which Rawlins found his way onto Ghana's political landscape. General I.K. Champon had overthrown the Buzia regime on January 13, 1972. General Champon's coup ushered in the National Redemption Council on January 13, 1972. General Champon sought to promote a union government under which he would be the presiding head to continue his regime. There is a widely held view that he lost his focus and thereby eroded the many successes he chalked early on in his regime. Some of his men weren't in favor of the union government agenda and thereby rebelled. He was eventually overthrown in a palace coup on July 5, 1972. The palace coup was led by General Frederick Akufu, who was in power from July 5, 1978 to June 4, 1979. This new regime went ahead to introduce multi-party democracy and the arrangement of parliamentary and presidential elections to be held on June 18, 1979. It was in the midst of organizing the elections that Rollins and his group felt the need to change the focus of the nation. I keep describing it as turning on the gas in a kitchen. That's how volatile it was. From a distance, all you needed to do was to ignite a match and throw it inside. Rollins felt that the country had been plunged into chaos and that the elite military officers were to be held accountable. Jerry John Rollins and his men were arrested and held in military custody pending a date to be interrogated under a court martial. Rollins and his group of six airmen appeared before a general court martial presided over by Colonel Eninfo, who decided to make it an open and public trial to be covered by the press. Rollins took responsibility for the coup and indicated that there was corruption and moral decadence within the country's fabric, which required a thorough cleansing to root out the Kanka. His pronouncements were instantly hailed and many aligned with his bold and brave posture. Selling of his pictures became hot business and he was hailed as a savior and thus named Junior Jesus. 
On the night of June 3, 1979, a group of junior officers staged a coup and freed Rollins, then formed the Armed Forces Revolutionary Council, AFRC, to rule the country. Well, certainly a revealing report there on the country's political history. But let's now turn to IMTN Vidge reports this evening as our citizen journalist Dimbi Mumuni Mutif highlights a deep gully across a road at Sisela in the Upper West region. This road had been washed away since last year and it has been left to the fate of their people. They can no longer assess this road. It's been more than a year, and authorities have not done anything about it. Very soon, the rains will be in, and people from Tumu, Sulbele, Sobele, Boti cannot cross from this particular community, Kandia, and its surrounding villages to Tumu or from Tumu to Golu. This is MTN video report. Your citizen journalist, Dimbie Mumumi Mutif, Upper West Region, Sisala West, Kandia. Well, just like Jim B there, you can also send to us your video reports via our WhatsApp number. It's 055 143 A reminder, you're still watching News 360 here from our news hub at Adesau in Kanda across still ahead. We've got the very latest in business news. We've got uh, sports news and also the very latest in international news. Welcome back to News 360. Let's delve into the business segment this evening, starting off with a look at government revenue, which increased fourfold after piloting the cashless system of contract payments at the tourism ministry. Vice President Dr. Mahamudu Bamia, who made this known at a conference on moving Ghana beyond aid in Accra, said the system will be rolled out to all ministries by the end of August this year. The Vice President, Dr. Mohamed Baumia, noted that government's digital initiatives are intended to promote the country's socio-economic development. He cited a port clearance system, mobile money interoperability, and the issuance of national identification cards. The Vice President acknowledged some challenges with the Ghana card registration and called for patience. So you go to passport office. You see so many passports that people have come to apply for and have never shown up to pick them after having paid the fees and everything. So we wanted to be able to make sure people, when they come in to apply for the national ID cards, to a large extent as possible, can receive them before they leave the, the premises so, so that we don't have this whole uh, process of people applying and not collecting and so on. Uh, that has given rise o over time, I mean, to some connectivity problems from time to time, and, and, and it has delayed the process. But it is very important that we are patient uh, with it uh, so that we have this chip embedded biometric card with our pictures on it um, for transactions later on. He said the cashless system of payments for all government's contracts piloted at the tourism ministry will be rolled out to all ministries by August this year. I mean, just Ministry of Tourism, we had revenue increasing by fourfold once we moved to electronic payments. Uh, and so you can see what the impact is going to be. Uh, work is very much underway. Uh, we expect that by August 1st, uh, we will roll out uh, for the rest of the government and uh, nine months from then. So we think that by June next year, and I'm putting pressure on them, uh, we should have a situation where all government payments will only be done electronically. Other issues discussed were the need to review the country's ICT policies and scale up coverage to underserved communities and reduce the cost of broadband. 
Deputy Minister of Communication, George Anda, is confident that digital initiatives will reduce corruption. The Ghana electronic payment system, which has been rolled out and is being implemented in phases, will provide greater opportunities to suppliers, contractors and consultants to obtain timely information and clarification to guide them in bidding for public contracts. The two-day conference was on the theme, Moving Ghana Beyond Aid, Expanding the Local Digital Economy. Well, we'll stay on that and watch its implementation by August as projected. But in some other business news, the Ghana Statistical Service requires $83 million to conduct the 2020 national census. Deputy Government Statistician David Combat made this known in Accra during the release of the April 2019 Consumer Price Index. The Ghana Statistical Service will begin a multi-stage trial census from May 26th with June 2 as the census night. This forms part of preparations for the 2020 population and housing census. Deputy Government Statistician David Combat said the service will require $83 million for the project. Government is usually the main financier of a population census, They're supported by development partners and the private sector. The cabinet has given approval for us to conduct the census. They have given us some money to start with the preparatory activities. But well, the census is over a period, five year period. So we expect that as and when we require, uh, we'll always get, we'll get the money. We will need close to $83 million. Yes, you can multiply by 83. You can multiply it by the current rate and see the CD equivalent. And for all, for all the activities of the census. The Ghana Statistical Service is setting up numeration centers for the census. To, to start with the processes which we have indeed started, we have almost uh, covered the whole um, half of the country with the updating of the enumeration areas which we are going to use for the census. We have also prepared the, the, equip, the instruments, the questionnaires, the manuals, and we are testing them uh, on the field. We are also doing a pilot, and this time we want to do it in stages. David Combat indicated the 2020 population and housing census will be paperless. Automated. We are acquiring, going to acquire tablets, electronic devices, tablets to collect the data. We have already started experimenting with we, the surveys that we currently do, we use tablets to take the, the, the and even the trial sensors, we are using uh, tablets. We are going to use tablets to collect the information so that it, it, we can release the, the results um, as quickly as we want. And, and also, uh, it helps us with some built-in checks that will help the field workers. You don't need to go through paper to edit. Well, that's all the business news you've got for you this evening here on News 360. But do visit our website. It's 3news.com for a lot more business stories. Stay with us. You've got sports news coming up shortly. And it's now time for some entertainment and lifestyle news with me, Nana Quedrado. Don't forget, this Saturday, Vodafone Ghana Music Awards is coming up. And any idea who will be hosting the 20th VGMA Red Carpet Affable Presenter and host of 3FM's Drive Time Show, Giovanni Caleb, and delectable TV personality Sika Ose have been confirmed host for the red carpet. Now, how prepared is Joe for the moment with the top stars and slayers? Owusu Arai has more. Oh my God. You've got the Nanama Mac Brown. Stunningly. What? She looks absolutely stunning. I also have Zanel Zhu. And then I have Bibi Bryce, who recently won an award. Congratulations. Ladies, you're not joking on the red carpet. There is never a dull moment on the Vodafone Ghana Music Awards red carpet. The VGMA red carpet experience has been one of the most exciting pre-award moments as what patrons wear become topics for scrutiny. In 2012, the VGMA red carpet was hosted by Confidence Hagen and Kofi Ochredako, also known as KOD. Confidence Hagen again partnered Benny Blanco to host the 2013 red carpet. The 2014 red carpet was hosted by Amanda GC and Black Boy. 2015, Amanda GC and Black Boy. 
In 2016, Belamundi and Elia Chibeb. While in 2017, Belamundi and fashion designer Elikem Komoji moderated affairs. Johnny Hughes and AJ Sapon hosted the red carpet in 2018. Acclaimed presenter and host of 3FM Drive Giovanni Caleb and delectable TV personality Sikose have the honor of moderating affairs on the red carpet at the 20th BGME. Yeah, I'm excited even currently. I've been working on my craft to polish, fine tune some things to see uh, what God has for us on Saturday. Trust me, we're going to blow minds. And uh, yeah, it's going to be superb. What new vibe is you bringing? I'm just going to do my thing, man. Thank you, we've come of age. Uh, it's been year in, year out. Uh, I mean, come on, I'm just going to do me on there. But hey, yeah, on the lighter side, though, those who are expecting uh, me not to ask who are you wearing, I mean, come on, what else should I ask on a red carpet? Your blood group, your BP? Well, I'm going to ask all that. Giovanni is optimistic of living up to the billing come May 18. The versatile presenter also commented on his partnership with Sikose. This is my very first time working with Sikosa. So we've met on various platforms. She's a very super talented, awesome, eloquent lady. I'm looking forward to a great evening. I'm sure she's also bringing on her A game, and I trust you. I'll match her boot for boot. We're not competing, we're just making sure that you have a good time. So Trust me, you'd love it. All right, so we still stay on the VGM as the countdown is still on. One key category to look out for is the artist of the year who walks away with that award. Well, we stepped out to talk to some wonderful patrons out there. Um, uh night the VGMA is this away and the stakes are very high six heavyweight musicians are in the race for the topmost category artist of the year Kim Promise, Kwame Eugen, Joe Metal, Sakwadier, Shatawale and of course Tomboy are all are in the ultimate award but the big question is who walks home with the topmost accolade so we are different we make a sound I think it should go to Kwame Eugene because from last year to this year, he bring more hit songs. So it might go to Kwame Eugene. I still vote for Sakodie. The one who will be winning is Kwame Eugene. Make sure I'm not going to this year, but then come back to Because why are the I'm not going to be here, and I was through our fans. So I'm not going to say, our fans are going to be any fans, and she ain't going to Yan San Coste Yam performing will be a new shatanti on one as some demand. Yeah, falling in our boss to this year. Artist of the year, dance or most popular song, Bibia, Bibia nominating the Bia Stoneboy Befa. You can musician, Stoneboy, or a talented musician. And you by force on your own too. Artist of the year, Nidia, Nipa, Debeman, ASM, who deserve it, and I like your Bia, Mitsian, and your mom, Hot Tommy, SM for life. SMD, Obia, it's me that I can't know. Stone Boy never been in the Bibi and shut out your own one child. I stone boy. Kinsak, Kinsak, Kinsak. Senior, I a senior, I don't cry, senior, penny, the penny. Yeah, you're to miss sipping for a career, sir, and you were sack with your ish. I don't know what. Sack what is Satawale Stone Boy? For life, SM for life. On one, no, really, Obia, and in your own. On one. Hey, no, 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 all right, so looking forward to that night, Saturday at the Accra International Conference Centre of Vodafone Ghana Music Awards. Who is picking that award? We're bringing you exclusive uh, up-to-date minutes right here on TV3 and, of course, on 3FM, Onya FM and Connect FM. My name is Nana Kwejad and that's about it for Entertainment News. I'm black and proud. Definitely, we're all black and proud. Yes, we are. You nearly said something. Yes, no, black and proud, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, I'm Natalie Force. Thanks so much for watching. There's a lot more news on our website, 3 newscom and I'm black and proud. I'm black and proud. Papi Sorry. We'll see you tomorrow. And for more news, you can log on to our website, 3news.com.